many people believed that the fossilized remains of animals proves that evolution has taken place in the past. And to find out whether this is really the case, let's turn to the science which studies fossils, the science of paleontology. Professor Roberto Fondi is a specialist in paleontology. He teaches at the Department of Earth Sciences in the University of Siena in Italy. Amongst his other activities, he acts as scientific advisor for the reconstruction of prehistoric animals. You may be surprised to know that the fundamental assumptions upon which evolutionary thinking is based are not at all confirmed by paleontology. What are those assumptions? Firstly, that living cells arose from non-living matter by spontaneous generation. This means that purely as a result of a chain of chemical reactions in a hypothetical primordial soup, a living cell was formed. Secondly, that these cells grouped themselves together into colonies to form complex multicellular structures. These structures were then supposed to transform during the course of time into animals and finally man. According to these assumptions, the ancestors of all living creatures, including man, can be traced back to a single cell. This ancestry is represented as a gigantic genealogical tree with numerous branches sprouting from a single trunk whose roots sink directly into non-living matter. And doesn't paleontology confirm those assumptions? Non confirm affatto questa, queste assunzioni. I vari gruppi biologici... Not at all. All the biological groups, from bacteria and blue-green algae to man, appear abruptly in the fossil record without any links connecting them with each other. Why is it then that so many people believe the fossils prove evolution? Evolution is presented to grown-ups and taught to the very young as a fact that has been verified and demonstrated for so long that it is a waste of time and even ridiculous to question it. In my books, Beyond Darwin and the Organicistic Revolution, I give the names of well-known scientists who firmly believe evolution is a proven fact, such as George Gaylord Simpson and Stephen Jay Gould of Harvard University. Yet, there are also equally well-known scientists who believe in evolution and admit there is no real proof, such as Emil Guyoneau of the University of Geneva and G. A. Kierkart of Southampton University. So, what is the truth of the matter? Well, there is a history book of the past, and that is the rocks and the fossilized remains in them. So it is up to the paleontologist to read that book and give the answer. And what do you read in that book, Professor? The fact is that after nearly two centuries of intense research, the paleontological evidence for evolutionary theory is not only rare, but highly questionable. The point is that if evolution had really happened, the evidence would be in great abundance and incontestable. The museums would be overflowing with fossils, clearly documenting the transitions between the various biological groups. Yet there are none. Moreover, there is no indication that the situation will change in the future. Those very few fossils which are claimed to show some kind of evolutionary link such as the amphibians, Ichthyostica and Simoria, the reptile, Propnognathus, the bird, Archaeopteryx, and the Australopithecine ape, called Homo habilis, are very far from conclusive. And what about the supposed evolution of man? The idea of gradual evolution of man from such creatures as Australopithecine apes is totally without foundation and should be firmly rejected. Man is not the most recent link in a long chain of evolution. He represents a type or taxon which has existed without any substantial change since his first appearance. The justification for this statement is abundantly clear from my books. 
So what then, Professor, is your final conclusion? Quite simply, that more progress would be made in biology and other disciplines if they kept away from the dead-end roads of evolution mythology and resumed the fruitful approach of Aristotelian, Linnaean, Cuverian and Gothian morphology.